Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in this video, we will talk about the modulation. And we will see that what is modulation, why it is used in the communication and what are the different types of modulation. So in a broad sense, the communication is an exchange of information either wired or wirelessly between the two points which are far away from each other. So this information could be voice signal or email or even the television signal. But here, let us take the example of the voice signal. So if we consider the speech signal or the human voice signal, then it contains the frequencies up to the 3 kHz. And if we consider the entire audible spectrum, then it varies from 20 Hz to 20 kHz. So this low frequency or the message signal is known as the baseband signal. And if you want to transmit this baseband signal to a far distance, then there are some challenges. So we will talk about these challenges little later. But the thing is, the baseband signal cannot be transmitted directly. But with the help of the high frequency periodic signal, it can be transmitted. So this high frequency periodic signal, which carries this baseband signal is known as the carrier signal. But the question is, how to impose this message or the baseband signal onto the carrier signal. Now we know that any signal has a three basic properties that is amplitude, phase and the frequency. So the modulation is the process where one of these properties of the carrier signal like the amplitude, phase or the frequency is changed according to the baseband signal. And based on the which property is changed, there are different types of modulation. But before that, first of all let us see why this modulation is required. So the first reason to use this modulation is to reduce the antenna size. So when the signal is transmitted wirelessly, then the size of the antenna is very important parameter. So this size of the antenna is proportional to the wavelength of the transmitted signal. And depending on the type of the antenna, it is the fraction of the transmitted wavelength. So let's say the size of the antenna is equal to lambda by 4. Now the relationship between the frequency and the wavelength can be given by the following expression. So for example, if the transmitted signal has a frequency of 10 kHz, then its wavelength will be equal to C divided by F that is equal to 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second divided by 10 kHz. So if we calculate the wavelength, then it will come out as 30,000 meter. And if the size of the antenna is quarter of the wavelength, then the length of the antenna will come around as 7500 meter. And this size is actually impractical, right? On the other end, if the signal is transmitted at let's say 10 megahertz, then the length of the antenna will reduce by the factor of 1000. That means in that case, the length of the antenna will be equal to 7.5 meter. And in fact, this size of the antenna is manageable, right? So that is one of the reasons for the modulation. Then the second reason is to reduce the interference. So just imagine in a single room, if three persons are talking to the same person, then that person won't get anything, right? Similarly, let's say if five different voice signals, which are around in the same frequency range, are transmitted without the modulation through a single channel, then there will be a interference between them and at the receiver, we won't get the transmitted signal. But instead of that, if each signal is modulated at the different carrier frequency and all carrier frequencies are relatively far away from each other, then there won't be any interference and all the signals can be demodulated at the receiver and the message signals of each transmitter can be retrieved. So using the modulation, the interference can be reduced and at the same time, the multiplexing of the different signals is also possible. And the example which I showed you earlier is the example of the frequency division multiplexing, where the different message signals are modulated at the different carrier frequencies and because of that, they can be transmitted simultaneously. So these are the some of the important aspects why the modulation is used in the communication. So now, let us see the different types of modulation. So broadly, there are two types of modulation. 
the analog modulation and the digital modulation. So if the message signal is analog, then it is known as the analog modulation. And similarly, if the message signal is in digital form or in terms of the ones and zeros, then it is known as the digital modulation. So first of all, let us talk about the analog modulation. So based on the type of the carrier signal, this analog modulation can be further classified into two categories. That is continuous wave modulation and the pulse modulation. So if the carrier signal is continuous wave signal like a sine wave signal, then it is known as the continuous wave modulation. On the other end, if the carrier signal is a pulse signal, then it is known as the pulse modulation. And first of all, let us see the different types of continuous wave modulation. So mainly there are three types of modulation that is amplitude modulation, the frequency modulation and the phase modulation. So in case of the amplitude modulation, the amplitude of the carrier wave changes according to the message signal. So if this is the message signal and the high frequency signal is the carrier signal, then the amplitude modulated wave would look like this. So as you can see over here, the shape of the carrier wave changes according to the message signal. Similarly, in case of the frequency modulation, the frequency of the carrier wave changes according to the message signal. So with the increase in the amplitude of the message signal, the frequency of the modulated signal will also increase. Similarly, with the reduction in the amplitude, the frequency of the modulated signal will also reduce. And similarly, in case of the phase modulation, the phase of the modulated signal changes according to the message signal. So in the upcoming videos, we will talk about all these different modulation techniques in detail. Alright, so now let us see the different types of pulse modulation techniques. So mainly there are four different types of modulation techniques. That is pulse amplitude modulation, the pulse width modulation, the pulse position modulation and the pulse code modulation. So let us briefly see all these techniques one by one. So in all these modulation techniques, the message signal is analog in nature while the carrier signal is a pulse strain of the finite frequency. So in case of the pulse amplitude modulation, the width or the duration of the pulse will remain same but the height or the amplitude of the pulse signal will change according to the message signal. Similarly, in case of the pulse width modulation, the height or the amplitude of the pulse will remain same but the width of the pulse will change according to the message signal. So here, the message signal amplitude is sampled at the rising gauge of each pulse and the width of the modulated signal is proportional to the sampled amplitude. And in fact, on the pulse width modulation, I have already made the separate video earlier. So for more information, you can check that video. Similarly, in case of the pulse position modulation, the width and the amplitude of the pulse will remain fixed, but the position of the modulated signal will change according to the input signal. So at the each rising gauge, the message signal is sampled and based on the amplitude of this input signal, the position of the modulated signal will change. That means as the amplitude of the input signal increases, then this modulated pulse will further go away from the reference position. And in fact, it can be generated with the help of the PWM signal. That means by generating the pulse, at every falling gauge of the PWM signal, this PPM signal can be generated. Alright, so now let's move to the next modulation scheme. So in the pulse code modulation, the message signal is sampled at the finite interval and the sampled value is quantized using the quantization process. And then using the analog to digital converter, the message signal is encoded. For example, if the sampled value is encoded in the 5 bits, then for every sampled value, we will get a pulse code of 5 bits. So this is the very brief overview of the pulse code modulation. But in the future videos, we will see in detail about this pulse code modulation. Alright, so, so far we have seen the different types of analog modulation techniques where the message signal was in analog in nature. Similarly, let us briefly talk about the sum of the digital modulation techniques. So in a very broad sense, mainly there are three different techniques. 
that is amplitude shift king the phase shift king and the frequency shift king so in all these digital modulation schemes the message signal is in digital form so this amplitude shift king is a one form of digital amplitude modulation where the amplitude of the modulated signal changes according to the digital bit stream so in this scheme the binary signal 1 is represented by the fixed amplitude of the carrier wave while the binary 0 is represented by the 0 similarly in case of the frequency shift king the frequency of the modulated signal changes according to the digital bit stream so here the binary 1 is represented by the one frequency while the binary 0 is represented by the different frequency and likewise in case of the phase shift king the phase of the modulated signal is changed according to the digital bit stream so in a binary phase shift king the binary 1 and 0 are represented by the different phases and to be precise they are 180 degree apart from each other so when there is a transition from 1 to 0 in the message signal or from 0 to 1 in the message signal then there is a 180 degree phase shift in the modulated signal so that is the brief overview of the phase shift keying so in a summary we have seen that what is modulation why it is used and we have briefly seen the different types of modulation techniques so in the future videos we will see some of these modulation schemes in detail so if you have any question or suggestion do let me know here in the comment section below if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos.